no, I broke my machine. That's what goes through everybody's mind the moment they see any kind of red light, amber light, E code, A code, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, it's not that. The machine is trying to communicate with you. It can only do so through blinky lights or through a series of numbers or letters. Uh, in some form or fashion, your machine is trying to say, hey, I want to step you through this process to get you operating, right? What I want to do is introduce you to how each of the types of systems can communicate with you to try to get you operational. So in the legacy products that you see, the 58, 82, 102, 152, they're going to have a series of lights on the front of the machine. They're going to either blink, be amber, be red, be green. Once you get to all lights green, you should be able to fire that torch and you're off and ready to go. In the front of the 60i X, as you can see, beautiful big bright display. It can have all sorts of combinations of letters and numbers communicating to you to tell you what you need to do to correct the issue. And then last but not least on the Cutmaster 40, same thing, smaller set of segments, and it'll throw a variety of letters and numbers to uh, try to communicate with you to get you up and running. So let's step through each of these. You didn't break your machine, but let's get you operational. Two things you need to look at. Every plasma machine is creating a lightning bolt out of the end of that torch. How does it do that? Well, it's taking the air we breathe, spinning it into a tornado, applying electricity to it, and then magically you've got a plasma jet that's able to cut through steel, stainless, aluminum, you name it. If it conducts electricity, it can cut it. So that lightning bolt has to be stable. So it needs air, it needs a certain amount of pressure and flow rate, don't forget your flow rate. And from a power standpoint, it's gotta have the right power. So if your machine is configured for three phase, you need to supply it three phase. If it's configured for single, single. If it needs 115, 220, 240, 480, 460, what is it, right? So let's go through those different checks and balances. The machines are smarter than we are from having to remember all of those codes. Let it kind of communicate with you. And pretty simply, it's just check your air source, follow that through, check your power supply, and follow that through. It's like following rivers of water, right? Let's see where it leads us. So we're gonna start with the 152. I'll work my way down. So right away, I see the power is on. I've got a red uh, light blinking at me. There's a couple of things going wrong, but what I like to do is make sure that I've got air set up first, and then the power. I've already plugged it in. I know I've got electricity going to it. It did turn on, but let's correct the air situation first and then go to power. So now I've plugged air into the back of the machine. Let's see what changed. Okay, now you can very clearly see there's a green light there for my uh, cylinder of gas that's pictured on the front of the machine. Interesting. Let's see if that cleared it and am I ready to go? Uh-oh. No fire. What's going on? Something isn't quite right. I'm not getting a fire going. So, but the air continues to run. This is not right. So I'm going to check my consumables. You need to check your consumables. I wonder if the guy in the last shift didn't put things in right. Drop your consumables, that's always a good idea. That helps them last a long time. <laughs> yep, look at that. No electrode. Whoever put this back last forgot to put an electrode in, or maybe it was me. Yep, sure enough. Got an electrode right here in my pocket. Put the electrode back in. Start cartridge. Nozzle retaining cap still got a red light going on green lights it's going to go through a series of checks you'll hear it it's going to spit air it engaged the contactor all of that just happened let's see what happens bam i'm ready to go i'm ready to work so i've introduced power i've introduced air all green lights ready to go okay let's turn that off we're going to move to the next one Obviously, 
error number one neither one of these systems have a torch in front of it so that's one error that it's definitely telling me something is wrong so let's make that connection first to do that so I don't drop that machine because I've got it balanced so you can see the front and the other um, and the other camera all right notice my communication code now changed something else is telling me I've got some other issues going on and notice my air is blinking at me let's correct that situation okay let's see what that did hey all green lights my bet is this is going to fire off now. Yep. Correct. Beautiful lightning bolt. Now I'm ready to cut. So that was a series of steps that I took on the 6 di You saw how the changes happen. They're communicating with you, trying to tell you, let's get back in the game. Let's step through what you need from a power and an air standpoint. All right. Let's turn that one off. Now, on to the Cutmaster 40. P-I-P. So instead of throwing up a series of numbers and letters that may not mean anything to you, P-I-P gives you something that's easier to remember. Parts in place. Well, what is it actually checking? It's checking for a connection that you should have seen between the torch and the consumable set. So there's quite a few different communication codes you might see. Parts in place, parts in contact. Um, these are communication codes to say, hey, Check, check what's going on at the end of your torch. So, let's make that connection. I'm gonna turn the machine off and then back on because oftentimes what happens is there's a series of communications that have to happen in series. And sometimes it has to need, it needs a reset in order to start that series over again. So let's turn this back on and let's see what happens. So from the front of the machine, I can see I've got 40, uh-oh, L-O-P, low pressure. Guess what? Forgot the air again. So let's move to the back of the machine. I'm going to push the air from the 60IX into the back of the 40. There's another one, parts in contact. Wait a minute. It started back over in that series again parts in contact when it tried to check the air yes the parts were still in contact the first time it went through the series after I got my air connected that reset that programming and it could try again and you heard it spit the air all lights green we're ready to go guess what there we go so at the end of the day each of your plasma machines are trying to communicate with you. That's the whole point. I really want you to understand that because I want you to be productive. At the end of the day, you're going to check your air from tip to tail, from source to plasma. Make sure you got 90 to 110 PSI. Make sure you don't have like 500 feet of quarter inch hose leading to it and it's wondering why it doesn't have the volume. Make sure you have enough diameter of hose and enough pressure. That will provide the pressure and the flow rate that you need for the system. And then on the power, refer to your owner's manual, make sure you've got the right power connected to it. Once you do, it's going to light up, and then it's a matter of stepping through those error codes or communication codes to where you're productive and up and running again. The machine's communicating with you. Work with it, and you'll be super happy you did. See you out there.